Hello, this is Selena. Welcome to the Summer Garden of Dreaming, the living museum of found art, broken and abandoned things. This is the 2023 tour. That would make it the, the ninth annual tour of the Summer Garden of Dreaming. The purpose of this garden was initially to see what a creative mind could do with junk, unwanted things that people didn't want anymore, beautiful eclectic things that didn't necessarily belong in a living space or apart from a museum, things that are what I call so ugly that they are beautiful. I call them ugly beauty. So we commence our tour on the same route. You might have noticed that there are far less pots, far less um, clay ornaments, metal ornaments on the walkway and um, in the porch. Because this year it's the slimmed down, scaled down version. <laughs> My version of King Charles's slimmed down monarchy, I guess. For several reasons. Last year the garden was, this is my rain chain, this is um, an old um, trowel, uh, a shovel that I picked up at a garage sale, it's over a hundred years old and I was told that it belonged, I bought it at a church sale and I was told that it belonged to a missionary and that kind of made it special and this old pitchfork again at a garage sale, it was poignant because a bunch of siblings were sitting um, outside under a tree in the yard of an old clapboard house and they were disposing of what was rest left of, I guess, their parents, their childhood home. So I bought a bunch of lovely old vintage children's books and a few garden things. This is, oh, this lilac. I bought this. I usually get my plants when the garden centers and the grocery stores are clearing out. I get them for 75-80% off. And sometimes I don't know what they are. After many years I discovered that this was a lilac when uh, the gorgeous fragrant flowers appeared this year. And this is a little baby lilac. And we're heading out now through the leafy gate into my beloved secret garden. So to get back to the reason for the scaled down garden, last year's garden, ta-da, this is the secret garden. You'll find a lot less color. And I wanted to uh, make this video before um, the clematis, which are blazing now, uh, were done. And they will be done in a few days' time. My perennial jasmine, it was quite mangy last year. It has kind of covered the arch by this summer, which is full of yellow and white fragrance, which is done now. But you can't have everything, and I'd rather have had the clematis. A little peekaboo mirror here, and a lot of lovely things. There were two metal chairs here, if you remember. I moved the other one somewhere else. This area was what I called the parlor because of the chairs but the chairs don't uh, show there are 34 chairs I think in this garden old antique mostly metal chairs and um, they're beautiful because they are a platform for um, the the flowering planters and they are they are beautifully camouflaged you don't even know they're there this um, is a double sink abandoned double sink sitting in the frame of an old coffee table and these two shells have a lot of sentimental value. Whenever I look at them, I remember um, a seaside holiday from my young girlhood. And these two were picked up from a little fisher boy, I think, selling on the shore. You can hear the birds twittering. Here we have half a bicycle. Whoever would saw a bicycle into half and abandon it, heaven only knows. And this platform for the lovely clematis to grow on consists of an old bar stool. Everything is painted black so it camouflages itself and merges into the background. You can see this crisscross that's an old metal frame of an ironing board and here we have 
the frame of a lamp. Can you see the, the, edge, the, the outline of the lampshade? And together they create this marvelous, marvelous platform for the clematis to creep all over. This is an old laundry basin. Um, you might remember that I never throw anything out if I can make use of them. An old dressing table mirror sitting on an old metal deck chair. And this is the view from this angle. This used to be the barbecue pit. There were three barbecues that I threw out. They had rusted, corroded. There was a little skeleton of a bicycle here with hanging baskets that's gone. My, my um, concrete boot broke. Um, some careless contractors broke about ten, five, six years ago. And, but I still like broken things. Makes the area look like ancient ruins. And uh, this is the only barbecue I kept. I find it really whimsical, one of these round charcoal barbecues with some impatience growing in it. And this is my bottle stand. The shelves are um, those old metal pantry shelf thingies. Um, and uh, to the left, the tall slim bottles are sake bottles. Um, the label's peeled off, but uh, we asked our tour guide as we were passing a pub um, to to beg two empty bottles for us when we go traveling um, instead of getting tacky things I get something as a souvenir that I can put in my garden to remember the holiday and uh, these ceramic bottles I bought from an old gentleman um, along with this huge empty it was when I got it whiskey bottle I think he had moonshine stored in the whimsical ceramic bottles from somewhere in Europe I think he was from Switzerland and it's really quiet today, not too many birds, unfortunately, since the observatory was uh, destroyed by builders. We've lost a lot of wildlife and birds. There are foxes um, making themselves comfortable in people's backyards, and as a result, the bunnies have gone, um, which is kind of sad, but also good where I'm concerned because my flowers now are safe but it was cute to have the bunnies running around in the gardens um, they've been eaten up by the foxes and people with little pets are getting a little nervous because the foxes, red foxes are getting very comfortable in these urban backyards this is an old um, powder room sink and these are the pendants, crystal pendants from chandeliers. This is a, an old shower door, all the pieces of mirror and stained glass, which my neighbor Mary gave me. She's an amazing stained glass artisan. Um, had all fallen out, but I took the trouble to glue them back on because I was having so many less flowers this year. So this is the view from this angle, very tidy, very quiet, it's a more gentle toned down garden I think. There was a big cedar here and a big cedar at the other end that came down during the last huge winter storm and we had to pay someone to, to get, get them cut down. And I worried that it would um, create a bit of a vacuum there, but it didn't. Nature takes over, doesn't it? There was a big cedar here too, uh, which we had to cut down. But, but the space has got filled up. The two-legged chair went about two summers ago. Uh, and my big metal ring, you can't even see it because the um, clematis is crawling all over it. Which is lovely. I'm, I, this um, window covered with stained glass was hanging on the wall by the gate. Um, all the pieces had come down, so I had to redo it, and it's now sitting here. Uh, lamb's ears. They, after two, three years, they've finally taken off. And uh, these are my two ceiling lamps that have been wired together, 
and covered with stained glass and these I moved from the bedroom section at the far end of the garden to here and they, they look kind of nice, whimsical. They go with the kind of pendulous flower look. Oh, the neighbor's dog is going crazy. This is a little Instagram station. These two I found in pieces. I wired them together. There was no seat. So I just put a concrete slab there. It's perfect for pictures. So to continue the story about the scaled down garden. Last year it was a wedding garden. With the daughter of the house. One of the daughters of the house getting married. So it was over the top. With 130 blooming planters. But I figured that there are better things to do with my time and also this large garden probably needs two people working on it for a couple of hours a day. Huge water bills, just <laughs> flagging energy and uh, I also realized that I spent so much time making this garden perfect so other people can enjoy it that I don't really have the time to relax and enjoy it as much as I would like to. So yeah, there's less than 20 annual potted plants this year. Much, much easier. I can just water them with the watering can instead of standing outside for an hour with a hose pipe. More stained glass. Another neighbor's hanging lamp. Those of you who have been following over the years will remember a lot of stuff and you might also miss a lot of stuff. Um, here you would definitely miss the frog prince who sat by this chair. This is the frame of an old vintage metal chair, which works beautifully. Um, a, a friend visited me. I have, a, have been, I was a little unwell in the spring and she brought me this beautiful red begonia. Usually my scheme for my annuals is um, mauve and pink or just mauve or just pink. This year I decided to go red. So all my annuals are red. We just had breakfast. The gentleman of this home is an amazing breakfast chef. And then I just left the table like this to get ready for the ninth annual tour. These frames are, I think, two old coffee tables. And again, just painted them black. And they are just lovely, aren't they? And these clocks, I don't think I've ever highlighted them before. The barometer and the clock, they've stayed out in all weather. Keep good time. Um, that's pretty amazing. It has to be waterproof because the batteries remain good even after the winter. Welcome to my garden. This is the view from the deck. And the climate is beautiful, beautiful as always. The sound of the water, it's still today, there's no breeze, so we don't hear the wind chimes. Unfortunately, yes, I am getting lazy with the wedding and everything. I think I was tired. I forgot to put the wind chimes away indoors, and so a lot of them have rotted, and the little pendulum chime things have fallen off which is probably why also we don't hear them now because I think every year before this we've always had the wind chimes tinkling. Here was uh, the vintage um, tricycle which held three flowering pots. Got rid of that. Just moved things around a bit. I remember just weeks before my mom passed away we were shopping and I found saw this little um, kettle it was so quaint and whimsical, I bought it. And it reminds me of her every time I come out here. And uh, this ladder also belonged to somebody's father. Just garage sale stuff. But people are very happy to tell their stories and the story behind them. And I appreciate it because I feel that people's joys, people's memories are also residing in my garden. I This used to be the rock garden. And I had a lot of metal plant holders here and maybe 10, 15 uh, flowering pots. They're all gone now. I got rid of the the plant holders. People were happy to grab them. And this 
was hanging in the wall above the barbecue. All the stained glass pieces had fallen out. I just glued a few back on and it is a very, very nice focal point for this area, which used to be full of annual flowers and would have been rather plain if not for that. And here is another clematis. This little fish pond thingy. We have a lovely thing in our area which is called um, a giveaway on a designated day of the year. Whatever you don't want, you put it out on your curb. People can take whatever they want and I I got this from somewhere in the area. So this chair used to be near the gate alongside the other one. I moved it here. Um, and you would remember this one my friend's dining room lamp and more clematis. This clematis here has done blooming. This area too had a big mirror and stuff. I've got rid of a lot of them. This was my crinoline lady. You can't see her because she's covered with the blooming clematis. Another stained glass. I moved the froggy here and And this is the lovely view from here. So we are coming almost to the end of the road. I moved these two. This used to be the kitchen. Got rid of a load of stuff from here. So it looks very, very different now. Not really kitcheny, I wouldn't say except for this ladder, which was also a gift from a friend who was trying to get rid of it from his mother's garage. She said it, he said it had been there for over 50 years. It's good. Yeah, the kitchen is stuff, and now the Boston Ivy Vine is climbing all over it. So it's beginning to look like it's at home in this garden. This is a little sled with some tin stuff. This is my shopping cart. I was going to throw it out and then I thought, no, it looks nice for these um, wine or vinegar bottles. And I have a few angels here. These are mirror mosaics made with two little windows and um, vintage windows wired together. I was going to throw out this barbecue, but it was far too heavy and I couldn't be bothered to empty the soil. So it's sitting there. Its wooden legs look like a giraffe's broken legs, but you couldn't see it because the, see them because the ferns have grown all over them. And we have the little angels there. And of course, these crystal um, pendants from um, the chandeliers that I threw out and donated really make everything bright when the sun shines on them my little old wheelbarrow. It may go out next year, uh, but I was merciless this year and I spared a few things. And uh, this one too, my little greenhouse that's made out of windows, maybe the next to be chopped. And my window of opportunity and the mosaic made out of shells from our travels overseas. A lot of them have fallen. I'll have to get rid of that soon. This is my 1950s vintage barbecue. And this is this year's success story. Uh, this climber, the um, perennial jasmine slip that I planted two years ago. The bunnies, the squirrels kept eating them, but they're finally climbing up this old over-the-door shoe rack. I put some old um, barbecue grills on the roof. So hopefully, Maybe hopefully by the end of uh, the summer, if not by next summer, the whole, uh, the roof and everything, the entire shed will be covered and that would be really nice. This giraffe, the CD rack, has moved a lot around the garden and now it's here. And this CD rack was at the foot of the deck steps and I've got it here now with an ivy. I almost axed it, maybe next year. And this is my angel from Angel Corner. This is the, the my tire planter. Tires make great planters. And um, the impatience has been safe from the bunny. No wind chimes today. 
no birds. They were twittering a little while ago. I wonder why they're quiet now. But it's Saturday morning. I'm glad there are no swimming pool sounds and other sounds. And I'm glad the dog has stopped barking. And these three metal chairs with the concrete seats. I have ivy growing on them. The ivy, little bit stubs of ivy I planted about two summers ago and now they've taken off. So I'm hoping finally for the ivy to cover the middle so that these will be just ivy shrouded one curving seat for anyone who wants to linger here and in the shade of the apple tree. I have another ivy covered this old broken garden chair had a sort of a crisscross frame and you can see it's covered with ivy now just exactly the way I wanted it to be. I had a potted plant on it. No more potted plants for me. Just whatever the sprinklers will water and whatever I can water within 20 minutes <laughs> with my watering can. This is the perfect, perfect time. I love how the light is. It's not too hot. And this area, this is the final stop, was the bedroom. I've got rid of the, the top and the bottom of the bed. This old chair I moved from the far end of the garden. And this it's a frame for the clematis. It was in full bloom just a couple of days ago. So the thing about the clematis is you have to get it at a certain point or it's gone. And this old wash basin, I put a perennial into it because that would save me from having to uh, plant every year. And also, these are hardier. So even if you forget to water, if it hasn't rained, they're good for a little while. And so we've come to the end of the ninth annual tour of the Summer Garden of Dreaming. This finally, I suspect, is the farewell tour. I, I see myself scaling down even more next year. So I just want to thank everybody who has been so enthusiastic about this garden. I want to, I'm thankful for those who acquired, purchased, picked up whatever was on this garden, including the extra pots, my clay things, clay pots, my uh, terracotta stuff from outside, because it really makes my heart glad to know that, I'll see how the sunlight is dappling dappling the, the, the grass. It really makes my heart sing to know that um, all those um, poignant, piquant pieces that um, were so dear to my heart have found a space in another happy place with a gardener who would really appreciate them. So this is Selena for the final time saying Remember, never stop dreaming because you and I, no one is ever too old to dream. Wherever your footsteps may lead you, may God be with you, guide you, give you peace, joy, strength and may the sun always shine on your life. Bye.